Welcome to Living Teal at the Table with Fair, the destination to talk about anything and everything, but most of all food, because we're here to make sure what you eat makes you feel great and never makes you sick. A seat at the table is brought to you by Fair, taking the fear out of food one breakthrough at a time. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, no matter where you are. We're glad you're here with us today. My name is Jason Lindy, and this is At The Table. Welcome back. I'm Tiffany Leon, your co-host of At The Table, and it's July. I can't believe we're halfway through the year already. Where has 2021 gone? Yeah, I have no idea. I know where it went for you with your wonderful baby. And uh, so speaking of July, will you be introducing uh, to your, uh, your newest edition, uh, any sort of special 4th of July traditions or things that uh, your family likes to do? A hundred percent. 4th of July is a huge holiday in my family. I'm from the Jersey Shore, so it screams fireworks, beach, barbecue, all, all of the above. It's also my cousin's birthday, so shout out to Cousin Pam, wherever she is right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, my family always does some sort of celebration around there. There's usually... Um, a sandcastle cake involved, which is mm. ice cream with cinnamon sugar made in a traditional sandcastle mold. If you haven't tried it, you can try it. Any sort of aller any sort of ice cream should work, I think. Um, but yeah, it's delicious. So what about you? Anything for the Fourth of July? Yeah, so for my wife, my wife's birthday is actually July 6th. And so she loves to conflate the two. And, uh, and, and you know, for her, the fourth is a huge holiday. Uh, and so I'm sure we're gonna do something, um, you know, something where there'll be some fireworks involved. Uh, you know, there's some in this area. And then, you know, we may wanna, uh, we'll see what traffic's like down on the mall. Uh, we may go to uh, outside the cathedral, which is uh, in DC, it's a high place where we could see the, the mall fireworks without being on the mall. I'm um, mm -hmm. just hopeful that this year, unlike last year, we can have the, uh, the real experience now that people are vaccinated uh, and we're, we're slowly easing back into uh, normalcy. So, yeah. you know, speaking of grilling, speaking of that, by the way, that ice cream, that sounds fantastic. <laughs> I, I'm like, that's, that's what I want right now. That's fantastic. Yeah, I want ice cream too. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it, that would be amazing. Well, we have an amazing guest to kick off July for us, uh, Chef David Rose. I mean, this is this guy is living the life I'd like to live. Let me uh, I, I want to just share with some folks, you know, some background about Chef Rose. Uh, you know, he is known as the People's Chef. He's been on Good Morning America. He's been a finalist uh, on Food Network Star. He's done cooking head to head with Bobby Flay. You know, he's got a dynamic style, uh, Tiffany, that uh, reinterprets classic Southern fare uh, with his traditional uh, French cooking um, and, uh, and adds in his family's Jamaican uh, background. You know, he's also the executive chef for Omaha Steaks. Uh, and by the way, those are wonderful gifts. I want to give a shout out to my brother a few years back. Uh, I had this <laughs> big box at the door and it was Omaha Steaks and I couldn't have been happier. So, uh, so fair family and fair friends, please welcome Chef David Rose. Hello. <laughs> hey, hey, hello. How are you doing, Tiffany? How you doing, Jason? Hello. Thank you so much for having me. And that was a, an amazing intro. I think I'm going to take you two on the road. And for everything, I'm going to just have you guys just come out and talk and introduce me. Uh, that was impressive. <laughs> Thanks so much for that. I appreciate it. I, I'd be happy to because you've accomplished it all, David. I mean, you know. <laughs> Chef, you you are you are really living the best life. You are doing so well. Uh, we're just really happy that you decided to spend a little time with us today. Um, and you know, why don't we um, why don't we just start at the beginning a little bit? Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, hold on, time out. First off, uh, shout out to cousin Pam. It's her birthday. I have to yeah. birthday to you, cousin Pam. And I heard you're from the Jersey Shore. Sure I'm am. from New Jersey. I'm from Phoenix. So I've spent nice. quite a few summers on the Jersey Shore. Am, am I doing the fist pump? Yeah. Doing that right? I'm You're from doing Jersey, it. but I don't per know if I got perfect. the fist pump. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. I've been practicing. I knew I knew you'd be here today. But um, yes, uh, thanks so much for having me. And you want to start from the beginning, you said? From the top? Yeah, I mean, where it all started. Tell us all about it. I mean, I know you're the son of two chef parents, and I'm wondering yeah. if they had any sort of influence in you along. 
Oh, yeah, most definitely. Jamaicans, we love to eat. We love to party. We love to drink. And just, you know, growing up, just great times, fun, excitement, uh, camaraderie, family, love. It's just always been around a table full of deliciousness, a cornucopia of great food. And, you know, uh, add that to this being from the tri-state area, as Tiffany can vouch for, you know, <laughs> it's just, you know, a huge cultural melting pot you got jamaican of course you have italian you have chinese you have indian you have french and just being exposed to these foods at a young age you know i just always love food period you know uh but i think it took me moving to atlanta to just kind of find that love and realize you know what there might be something more to this food thing i went to little cordon bleu uh graduated summa cum laude so you know this is where your applause by the by the way summa cum laude nice. yeah or, or not <laughs> But yeah, like, you know, just a I'll magna. Put yourself on the back for that. Just a magna it's here. Cool but very good. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, I just love food and just, I'm a very creative type person. Uh, so for me, you know, I've always loved working with my hands and sort of, you know, molding clay and drawing and sketching. So, you know, cooking, the plate is my canvas. You know, I just love to play and create. And I just kind of pull from my Jamaican heritage. Uh, the uh, the multicultural diversity of New Jersey and being in the South and just kind of created my own style of cooking, you know, and I'm constantly learning, constantly evolving. And I think when you stop learning, that's kind of when you stop living. So I just love to, you know, travel and just pull from those experiences and just constantly experiment. Food is that's literally it. my life. Chef, that is, again, we got a lot there. I, I mean, I wish I could just spend a few minutes <laughs> Uh, you know, unpacking that all, uh, but you are, mm -hmm. you are just, you're doing great. And we're just, like I said, so happy to have you on board. Hey, would you uh, share with us how we got connected? I mean, what is your food allergy story, uh, Chef Rose? Uh, it's funny. Uh, my food allergy story was actually displayed. You mentioned Food Network. It was displayed on Food Network. And before you come on, as a finalist, you, you know, you sign a disclaimer about any allergies, any reactions to medication. And clear as day, I said, peanuts, P-E-A-N-U-T-S. So they knew, and it was kind of a running joke, you know, every episode, let's see if they redeem us. And it was actually one episode they did. It was a camping episode. And, you know, of course, you know, with all these, you know, different challenges, there's always a twist. So the first challenge, was making a uh, campfire favorites and just giving random coolers full of random food to every team. And midway through the challenge, Andrew Zimmern, uh, he's there as the guest chef and he's giving uh, another random ingredient. So he threw us uh, trail mix, I believe. And uh, the person on my team, Jason, who actually won that season, a good friend of mine, Jason Smith, uh, he is huge in baking desserts. He is a whiz with anything sweet. And he made a dessert. He made some type of chocolate fondue or I forgot what it was, but he put the trail mix in there and neglected to tell me he put the trail mix in there. And he's a Kentucky boy, good old boy, a uh, very long Southern drill. He's like, hey, David, taste this dessert. It'll make you, it'll make your eyes roll back in the back of your head. I said, okay, oh, no. I kind of want to try that out. So I tried it out and it literally made the eyes roll in the back of my head because I knew, you know, with allergies, I, I knew immediately. And I was like, Jason, are there peanuts in this? And he's like, oh my God, honey. <laughs> so, you know, we caught it pretty early and I spit it out. They got me Benadryl, um, pretty mild reaction. And since then, you know, it's kind of been on full display. Uh, but all that to say, my entire life, I've always had that peanut allergy and have just kind of, you know, been very mindful of questions to ask where, uh, you know, certain restaurants when I go to, it might not be on the menu, but just knowing the style of cuisine, like, you know, uh, Thai, different type of Asian cuisines, they might even garnish or something might be in the sauce. So I've just always been very mindful of that growing up. But uh, peanuts have been an allergy since day one. And I love working with Fair because, you know, even though I have that allergy, I've uh, refused to allow it to define who I am as a chef, who I am as a person, and still able to enjoy good food. So I'm just happy to be here, talk about it, and talk about some good food and, and grilling. You know, I got the big green egg here. So, you know, thank you guys again for having me. Yeah, it's crazy to be on the set of a Food Network, next Food Network star, to be around people mm -hmm. that are so in tune with food and to still have some 
like a slip up like that. That was actually going to be one of my yeah. questions was, was, do you have any experiences on Food Network related to your food allergies? And Bam. Bam, right there. <laughs> that's crazy. So crazy. Hope, hopefully one of one. Hopefully that's the first and last time that happened because that's, yeah. that's never fun. I've read one of the ju- one of the judges on Chopped has a hazelnut allergy, and I've been I read yes. Kitchen they don't have hazelnuts at one of the ingredients whenever she is a judge. I don't I don't yep. know if that's true. You know, it, it was on the internet, so maybe. I, but um, the, you is. know, just the precautions that they t- that they're taking to to keep her safe. Oh my, sorry that wasn't. Yeah, it is. Okay your case yeah it's uh it's amanda freitag and yeah, uh, we're actually mm-hmm. represented by the same by the same management so yeah she's uh she's done some work as well with yeah. uh different allergy you know um uh, establishment panels stuff like that and uh yeah. yeah it's just you know hey we, we have it but we deal with it we make it happen we don't let it define who we are that's all right that's all right did you um when you were on the next food network star had did you pick up mm-hmm. any tips or tricks cooking wise from the competitors or, or judges anything that you learned along the way um yeah you know a, a little bit of inspiration as far as like you know just different chefs because we're literally every single one of us you might have similarities but like very individual very you know personality driven types of cuisine and style of cooking to where, you know, um, after a while, you know, you'll eventually kind of, you know, pick up and like, oh, I never thought of that. And just kind of change your way of thinking and food in general. Uh, but I think the one thing I learned most uh, from Food Network Star, it's literally like a boot camp for on-camera cooking where they throw you these crazy, ridiculous challenges. Like uh, use a banana in a savory application. It must also be a dessert. You have to cook this in five minutes and talk about the 20 ingredients in under 10 seconds and go and don't mess up and go and you have <laughs> yeah, you and know, succeed <laughs> uh, pre-covid right. yeah and succeed pre-covid okay. you have like you know anywhere upwards of 50 to 100 people you know you got bobby flay giada you know food network royalty and wherever the amazing guest chefs are there yes. and it's just like you know high pressure high tension but I loved it, you know? I loved it, it taught me a lot and just really helped me hold my skills. Uh, so, you know, it, it, it really kind of prepared me for what came next after that. So the challenges and the on-screen challenges, that kind of, you know, what gave me the tools I needed because, you know, in real world application, when you're on a GMA or Today Show, you have to concise all that information in that two to three minute segment and sometime there might be breaking news and cut that three minute segment down to a one minute segment. So just being very nimble on your feet to just, you know, adapt, adjust and just roll with the punches. And uh, that's Food Network Star did. So thanks, Bobby. Yeah. Bobby's my boy. Yeah, you always see them like, OK, we're going to have to go quick, quick, quick. Just show yeah. us the final product. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Speed, exactly. speed you right yeah, through that cooking that demo that you worked so yeah. hard to set up. Mm-hmm. And prepare. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, you know, I've, I've gotten pretty good at it and just kind of learning with rolling at the punches and just being able to, you know, have my midway, you know, finish my, you know, finish, finish, or like when there's less than midway, you know, have that finish as well. So, you know, just constantly thinking a million different moving parts at once, you know, so food never helped me with that. Hey, you know, chef, so it's summer, it's July and uh, oh. obviously you're enjoying yourself outside. I think both Tiffany and I wish we could be outside and enjoying <laughs> the weather here. Um, Come on this, down. <laughs> that, oh, trust me, your area, there is great cooking throughout the wow. whole me- metro Atlanta area. I mean, Gwinnett, I mean, all those counties are just a laboratory right now. And I'm so delighted to be, uh, I, I really do want to get a, come down and, and just hit them all. What are some of your favorite summer activities there, Chef Rose? What do you like to do? I know you're in great shape. There's got to be a workout program in there somewhere. Um, but uh, what do you like to do during the summer? <laughs> um, first off, you know, uh, the backdrop just kind of tells the story. I just really think that summer and grilling is just, you know, they're just synonymous. They go hand in hand. You know, you know, it's summertime when you, when you see the grills, you know, lit up. You see that charcoal burning and the smoke. And just that meat sizzling when you start hearing the sizzles and the aromas of, you know, the burgers, the briskets, the ribs, the pulled pork, the chicken, the snapper. I can go on and on. You get the point. But <laughs> grilling, I love it. And, you know, to me, I think the cavemen got it right. 
you know, thousands of year ago, years ago, you know, meet, open flame, and that's just the way, you know, that's my, my preferred method of cooking. And I actually grill year round where I have four of these bad boys in the backyard and it just brings me so much joy. So grilling, it's fun. It's great to kind of, you know, have everybody congregate. And especially with the times now with COVID, you know, we can do that responsibly by being outside and, you know, having that space to have a good time, but also be responsible, um, you know, given the, the, you know, the climate we're in right now. Um, motorcycles, I love bikes. Um, I have a Harley Davidson. I fondly named her Rock and Roll because I like to party and my bike likes to party too. <laughs> and I just like far, near and wide, I'm just all over the place riding my motorcycle, you know, uh, sleeves are optional on the bike also um, when I'm riding. Also in so, New Jersey. Know, uh, also in New Jersey, exactly, you know. <laughs> but I'm from Jersey, so you might find me in a tank top, a white tee <laughs> also. That's kind of the New Jersey uniform for summertime. And, you know, the bike just brings me so much joy, so much happiness. And I've been riding, you know, close to 20 years. So um, again, I ride year round on the motorcycle, uh, but summertime, you could definitely find me out there five times out of the week. I'll be on that bike. And, uh, you know, you got to stay in shape, man. You got to be beach ready. You know, you got to have that six pack, not a keg. You got to have that six pack. So working out, you know, I like to take that outside, doing a lot of calisthenics and stairs and push-ups and a lot of, you know, body weight regimented exercises. And, um, you know, if I'm outside, if I'm having a good time, if I'm being active, I'm a happy camper. And those are a couple of my favorite things to do yeah. when, you know, it breaks summertime. Well, I mean, you remind me of the, the saying, you don't have to get ready if you stay ready. And, uh, and you are ready, sir. Hey, you as, got someone it. Who, as someone who just cooked a bunch last night on the grill, I mean, I, I make Sundays my, you know, cook ahead week. So yeah. for the week, I just throw a bunch on the grill and just go, go, go. Had an Angus mm -hmm. yesterday. I did a little olive oil with salt seasoning. Tell us what are your, some some of your favorite, you know, recipes? And let's you know let's give a little love to the egg. What do you love to cook on the egg, meats wise? I loved reading that about your background. You know, what's your go to? Not one of your many go to cuts of meat, and how do you like to prepare it? Yeah, most definitely. Um, I had the uh, the fortunate honor of coming aboard as Omaha Steaks spokesperson and executive chef in October. Uh, so needless to say, red meat has been my life lately. And as, as far as steaks, I'm very much a red meat person. Uh, the ribeye, very hard pressed to find a better cut of meat than the ribeye. In my opinion, when it comes to steak, it has that perfect marbleization and that luscious rib cap on the top where that's the best part of the steak. And um, we sell the rib cap by itself, but we have these humongous three pound, 48 ounces of ribeyes. And what I love doing is doing a nice reverse sear in the egg. And um, what I do then is when I get to that temperature about five to 10 degrees below that target temp for me, I'm a medium rare guy. So that nice 130, you know, 135, that's perfect to me. So I get the steak to about 120. And then what I do next then is us eggheads, uh, big green egg zealots, call it caveman style. So what you do is you open the egg up, remove that direct heat. The only thing left in the egg is charcoal and you take that steak and you sit that directly on the coals. And it's gonna go very quick, a nice hard sear on all four sides. And you take that out, let it rest when it's beautiful and nice and charred, but you gotta put some butter on it. You let that butter melt, let it rest for about eight to 10 minutes to let those juices redistribute and then slice it up and distribute it accordingly. A um, Couple you know, sides of grilled veggies, uh, maybe some grilled broccoli, um, some seafood, some grilled shrimp, lobster tails, cedar plank salmon, you name it, you name it. And, you know, you just slice into that bad boy, maybe a little mauled on, finishing salt on it. And it's great for sharing, you know, or in my case, I'm a big guy just eating the whole 48 ounces by myself. But for the average eater, it's great for a family of, you know, three to four to share. So steaks are great. I'm Jamaican. Uh, Jamaican jerk chicken is quintessential of the beginning of summer. So I love spicy food, uh, but it's spice with a purpose. You know, it has the allspice, it has the cloves, it has the cinnamon, uh, it has the scotch bonnet pepper in there, which is indicative for that nice spice. And you marinate that and it's just, if you've never had it before, find the nearest Jamaican restaurant, get you some jerk chicken. 
And uh, I have a pretty good recipe, and uh, I love jerk chicken. So jerk chicken and steak and grilled snapper, I'm a happy camper. Mm, sounds delicious. You are making me I didn't mean to make hungry. you salivate. I'm sorry. I made myself hungry. I don't have any food. I got I got a drink. That's it. So we're going to wrap this up and get some food. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, Just, like yeah one, one more quick question. You, I mean, you mentioned the pandemic and, and um, outings or, or gatherings outside, yeah. being able to accommodate um, for the times. And a lot yeah. of people with food allergies have been eating more at home. They've been able to manage their allergies sort of, you know, within their household uh, over yeah. the last year. But what sort of tips or tricks would you say to anyone that's gearing up to start venturing out to these gatherings again? Um, because people need to relearn how to manage their food allergies in large groups. And how, how do you approach the yeah. host or do you decide to host? And any, any tips for, for our listeners there? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think people, a lot of times, um, they don't plan enough uh, when they grill. And a lot of times, you know, they're grilling at the last minute. They're, they're burning steaks. They're burning burgers. You know, they're, uh, they're, they, the meat's already dead. Don't kill it twice, you know, cook the meat, treat it accordingly. You know, uh, if you like it well done, more power to you, but you know, cook it the way you like it, take your time. But I think planning is very overlooked where um, from a timing perspective, all foods, all proteins, all vegetables, um, you know, different seafoods, they cook at different times. So sort of putting together a schedule of what you want done ready when your guests are coming. And a lot of that stuff you could prep and season ahead of time, could have pre-cooked, you know, don't make your, your potato salad or your coleslaw day of, you know, save yourself some time, you know, don't stress yourself out because, you know, summer and grilling should be stress-free. So why add stress? So definitely plan. And I really think if you're very skeptical about using the grill or scared or intimidated, don't be. It's just cooking. If it's food, you know, it gets burned, you know, start new. But let's try not to burn the food. Um, knowing your hot spots on the grill. Uh, knowing where it's hot and knowing where it's cooler. So that way where you're cooking the temperature, you know, say take chicken. You don't want to put that chicken immediately directly on the hottest part of the grill straight off the plate because nine times out of 10, you're probably going to burn it and overchar it before the actual chicken is cooked in the middle. So just using temperature control where you start that chicken off low and slow on a cooler side. Then when you get close to that 160, 165, then you get that nice sear on there. Um, so anything, you know, you can go to my website, you can go, you know, Google anything. Google is your friend. Google is my friend. So if you're curious, if you don't know, you know, feel free. You can hit me up on Instagram, Chef David Rose. Slide in the DMs. I'll answer the question as best as I can. Or just, you know, Google it, you know, but the information is out there. So don't be scared. Have fun. You know, at the end of the day, if you're having fun, that's all that matters. David, that sounds delicious. And uh, I can't wait to try that. And uh, you have some other guidance coming out here soon, don't you? Uh, don't you have a book coming out this fall? Funny you mentioned that. Bam. I've been a brand ambassador and spokesperson of sorts with Big Green Egg for the last 10 years. Uh, everybody over there is my family from the stock person to the president to the founder of the company. And whenever I'm grilling, it's going to always be on a Big Green Egg. So I wanted to come out with my very first cookbook and I wanted it to be grilling. So I was like, of course it has to be Big Green Egg, but I want it to be very unconventional and things you normally wouldn't see on the grill but you can grill and you can apply it to it. So it's called Eggin, E-G-G-I-N, David Rose, that's me. David Rose cooks on the big green egg where you literally have everything you need. Soups, salads, entrees, veggies, meats, seafoods, sweets, baked desserts, and drum roll, smoked and grilled cocktails. Literally the entire meal from soup to nuts is made on the Big Green Egg Grill. And it's gonna literally blow your mind when it comes out. This is my baby, you know, uh, everything from the introduction to the recipes, to the anecdotes, to the head notes. Uh, if you know me, you know my personality, uh, my charisma, the type of sense of humor I have, it's literally my voice will be in your head as you read this book and it's delicious. It's, it's really, really good. And it's, you know, my style of cooking, it's really good. It's flavorful. It's cultural. 
Uh, it's something you'd gladly pay top dollar in a restaurant, but it's very approachable to where, you know, any novice cook or anybody that can follow a recipe can follow along, not be intimidated, and just really wow your guests. So Egan, David Rose cooks on the big green egg, dropping everywhere. Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, uh, everywhere, October 5th, 2021. So mark your calendars, set your reminders, tell mom, tell dad, cousins, lawnmowers, mailman, the random dude behind you at the supermarket. Again, David Rose cooks on the big green egg, October 5th, 2021. And did I mention it comes out October 5th? <laughs> you, did. you did, and we can't wait. And, I'm, and, and frankly, I'm hoping there's an audio version just so I can listen to you, my friend, because that would be to hear you like narrate it while I'm driving around. I would love that. Um, I'd love both, frankly. I just, I can't wait. Um, uh -huh. I'm really intrigued by the cocktails and the desserts that you've mentioned. Uh, both Tiffany and I are fans of old fashions. We're hoping that there might be, you know, maybe a little smoke bourbon somehow on that a little, you know, a little something on there that we can do. I will neither conform or deny the, uh, the smoked old fashioned, but I will say this. Yes. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. This sounds like my kind of cookbook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Same. And, and, the, and the, the cool thing about it, um, it can be used on any type of grill, even though the big green egg is my preferred. If you have something else, feel free to use it. And you can also, you know, transpose these recipes, cook it indoors. So just because it's a grill cookbook or a grill centric cookbook, uh, the recipes can be done inside or outside. David, where else can, uh, where, where can our listeners find you, my friend? Where can we, uh, I know you're on Instagram and what's the, yes. what's the handle there? Uh, you can find me on Instagram, Chef David Rose. Uh, you can find me on Facebook, Chef David Rose, website, chefdavidrose.com. And if you forget any of those things by some sheer miracle, just type in Chef David Rose and you'll see this, all of this <laughs> and this and this. We love that. <laughs> well, David, thank you so very much. We My have pleasure. had a wonderful time. I think Tiffany and I cannot wait to get outside and start grilling immediately. Um, all I could say is you keep being you, sir, and let and let the rest of us just a, a smile at admiration. You are you are doing great, and we are so honored and and just honestly privileged to have you on our show today. Have us have you on the podcast today. So thank you so much uh, for spending some time with us. My pleasure. Thank you. And it's my honor. It's my privilege. So feel free. You know, I'm only a phone call away. You know, there's always the, the DMs on IG. So reach out to me. It's great talking to you. Uh, I'm just humbled by the opportunity to talk with great people like you. And any chance I get to talk about food, especially grilling, I'm all about it. So whenever you're ready, you always have a backyard to congregate, have a smoked old fashioned and some amazing barbecue at my house. So let me know, fill me in. But uh, it's been truly my pleasure. So Thank you both. Thank you so much for stopping by and hope you have a great rest of your summer and we will keep an eye out for uh, the cookbook on October 5th, 2021. Thank you very much. And to my Jerseyans on the Jersey Shore, keep on fist pumping and fighting the good fight. Yes, <laughs> love it. <laughs> All righty. I think we're going to have to fade in some techno music and have some music in the background. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> oh, this make my day. Make oh my man, that's hilarious. <laughs> Thank Alrighty. you so much, guys. Thank yeah, you, thanks, David. Jeff. That was wonderful. <laughs>